Welcome back, Pouring Nation. If you're watching this video, you probably have a consistency problem. And with acrylic pouring, consistency is king, but it's also confusing. There are so many different ways to check consistencies and so many different things you can do to mess up your consistency that I want to cut through all of that, show you the two simplest ways that I use to check consistency. And with the right acrylic pour paint consistency, you're going to be that much closer to making your next amazing piece of artwork. All right, when it comes to consistency, there are four and probably a few more main ways that people in the pouring industry check their consistency. Some do it by feel. That is definitely not me. I am not the kind of person that can feel how that paint looks, at least not yet anyways. Some people do it by the drip method where they're dripping the paint down and seeing how the stream looks as it drips. Some people use the uh, mount method where they drip it in back into the paint and see how the mound of paint looks as it disappears into the paint. And other buds do it by the uh, drip and tilt method. And I think for me, the majority of the time I use the mound method and I follow it up a little bit with the drip and tilt method to make sure that each one of my paints is the same consistency. And each one of these has some drawbacks. I don't want this to scare you, but I want you to be aware that these things could happen while you're checking consistency of your acrylic pour paint. So as I mentioned before, the feel method, that's just not a method I can do. I know a lot of acrylic pouring artists that they just feel as they're painting, they use the same medium, the same paint every time, and you will get some muscle memory if you do that. My problem here on this channel is I experiment with all sorts of different stuff for you guys, so I'm never doing just glue or just Floetrol or just Liquitex paints. It's something different every time, and I'm just not getting that muscle memory that other people do. If you do it enough, you probably will get to the point where you can feel the consistency. The next uh, method that I've seen a lot of people use is the drip method. Especially I see this with the Shelly Art, pour, uh, Shelly Art Bloom technique and the cell activator is they lift the paint up, they let it drip, and depending on how long it flows and then with how it drips is how they check consistency. I haven't found that to be consistent, honestly. In the times that I do it, it matters which paint you use, which pouring medium you use, and so I have kind of shied away from that one, but it can definitely work. You just have to realize that every paint and medium is gonna make that a little bit different. Also with the mound method, either the mound when you're dripping it onto the paint or when you're dripping the paint around and seeing how long it takes for that mound to disappear, every medium, every paint is going to be different. How high you drip the paint, the size of the stick, all of that matters with that method. So you wanna keep track of that and be as consistent as possible as you're creating your paint. And then the blob and tilt, if you put a big blob of paint and a little blob of paint and then tilt those, obviously the big blob of paint is going to have more energy and potentially flow faster even than the smaller paint, even if it's a little bit less thin, just because there's more paint there. So you have to make sure you're using the exact same amount of paint. And then every medium and every paint flows differently. As I mentioned before, I do not want to dissuade you from doing this. These are the, some great methods to check the consistency of your paint, but you need to be aware of what could happen and what to look for while you're doing it. So for new pouring artists or pouring artists that are having trouble getting the right consistency, I recommend you use either the blob and tilt or the mound methods. Now today with the mound method, I'm using uh, Craft Smart white glue as my pouring medium and Arteza as my paint. I have one part paint, two parts pouring medium, and then um, water until I get the right consistency. So first the thick method, if you notice, as the paint is coming off my stick, I'm getting a mound upon a mound and it's very squiggly and it has some body as it lands before it integrates in. When I just drizzle it around, it's taking four or five seconds for that drizzle to integrate back into the paint. That's how you can tell your paint's thick. Now here with the medium, it's making a very, you know, maybe a slight mound upon a mound. I'm not getting as much uh, squiggly action. And when I drizzle it around, it's only taking two or three seconds for that to immediately integrate in the paint. Last but not least is thin paint. When I pull it off, it barely makes a tiny bit of a pyramid, if no pyramid at all, and immediately goes away. When I drizzle it around, it's a second or less, and that thing is gone and integrated back into the paint. 
So I wanted to show you how the size of the stir stick makes a difference. The tiny stick doesn't get as much paint on it, so it drizzles, as I mentioned before, and the bigger stick gives you way bigger mounds and sometimes lasts longer. Also the height, look at this, I'm, I have these two next to each other, and one is the normal height, about an inch, inch and a half on the ground, the other is three, four, five inches off the ground. Notice how the mound that it makes is completely different. You need to keep that in mind when you're mixing your paint. So my preferred method is the mound method. I like to um, grab a stick full of paint, raise it up off my paint about an inch, inch and a half, and have my paint at about a 30 degree angle and let it drizzle off and check how the mound looks when I do that. I do that every single time so I've gotten used to how it looks with the mediums that I have and I can tell how thick or thin the paint is based on that mound. Now when you're using this method you want to make sure you're doing it the same way every time. You're using the same size of stick. You're using the same distance above the paint that you're drizzling in. You're also using the same angle because if you angle your stick straight up and down or to the side 30 degrees like I do you're going to get a different result. The higher up you are the less of a mound you're going to get. The lower you are the more a mound you're going to get and the fatter your stick the more paint you have therefore you have more energy as the paint's dropping down in it. So you need to keep those things in mind do the same thing every time. All right before we get to the blob and tilt technique if this video has been helpful please like the video, that helps this video get distributed out to other new acrylic paint pouring artists that are having problem with consistency. Also, if this is the type of content you like, hit the subscribe button, and if you wanna get notified, the bell icon for our weekly videos. And last but not least, what consistency method do you, you use with your acrylic paint pouring, or what method are you going to try with your next pour? All right, so the next method we're gonna talk about is the blob and tilt method. Essentially, what we're going to do is create a blob of paint for every color right next to each other on a piece of paper. I like to use the junk mail flyers that I get, especially during this campaign season, because they're a little bit thicker than normal paper and they don't bend as much as the, the wet paint gets on them. But we're putting a blob the same size for every color right next to each other, and then lifting the piece of paper up and letting those blobs of paint run for three to five seconds. And then we're putting it back down and comparing. And the ones that runs longer is thinner, the ones that run less are thicker, and right there we can get what's called relative consistency. Now relative consistency is how consistent your paints are compared to your other paints. Now this isn't going to tell you that your paints are the right thin or the right thick, although you'll start to feel how that is as you do more and more of these but it's gonna tell you how consistent your paint is compared to the other paint. One of the best things you can do as a new pouring artist is just make sure your paints are all the same consistency. Your pores, whether they be thick or thin, will come out way better if all of your paints are the same consistency, and that's a major problem for a lot of new acrylic pouring artists. Now, if you wanna go one step above that, you can use this amazing consistency gauge chart from uh, Mark Gilday Art and I will link it in the description below, but this chart, we're doing the same thing, but what Mark has done is made sure that when we put the piece of paint on, we only fill this circle, so it's the same amount of paint every time. We lift it up for five seconds is the recommendation, and then we put it down, and then based on where the paint goes, we can see what the consistency is with these numbers from one to uh, 14. And as I mentioned, this blob and tilt method is the method that I recommend all new acrylic pour artists have done. I've done a few different one-on-one -on -one videos with different artists and I have them do this every single time so they can see how close to the same consistency their paint is. It makes a huge difference. Now, if you want some additional information on how to use this consistency gauge, you need to see this video from Mark on his channel, 